The coalition of northern groups, CNG, has taken a swipe against the federal government over stranded Nigerians in crisis-torn Sudan. In a statement, CND demanded immediate action from the National Assembly, National Security Advisor, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The group wondered what was responsible for the delay in the evacuation of Nigerians from Sudan. We're now being joined by a foreign affairs expert, is Professor Babafemi Badejo, is also a professor of political science and international relations. Good to have you join us, Professor. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. And let's quickly just take a look at what the coalition of uh, northern groups, the CNG, have said. Uh, they've taken a swipe against the federal government, saying that it is complacent in um, the evacuation process of Nigerians in war-torn or crisis-torn Sudan. What's your take on that? Well, um, they, 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 have, they, they, they are quite correct in uh, uh, articulating uh, the fact that our government should have done better um, in ensuring that uh, the almost 3,000 Nigerians in uh, uh, Khartoum, especially, uh, or the whole of Su Su Sudan, are catered for. As soon as it was clear that things were breaking down, even before uh, the, the, the actual exchange of fire, uh, we should have been thinking about what do we do to get our people out. That's what a country that is what being called a country does to provide for the security of its citizens wherever they are. So it doesn't have to be to take a group because most of the uh, students are students from the northern part of the country. Um, uh, uh, and that's why the CNG was the one issuing the statement. But it doesn't matter who issues the statement. The fact of the matter is we have been lax. You mentioned the fact that Nigeria is planning. Planning was the word you used. Uh, um, it's not that evacuation is, uh, is, is taking place. Um, the, 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 the UN uh, succeeded in pulling its, uh, its, its staff by road to Port Sudan. Um, uh, uh, it's, uh, we in an operation that started um, uh, planning for it as soon as the crisis uh, began. Mm. And the people started moving. A friend of mine in the convoy was telling me at about uh, uh, 4 p.m. today that they are, about to, they are still about to get to Port Sudan after 30 hours. It's a long convoy. And we are talking about wanting to go to Egypt. The shortest distance is probably uh, to, to go through Ethiopia, where another friend of mine working for the African Union told me he was going to go through. What's our government doing? The Ethiopians were allowing other citizens of other countries to enter Ethiopia. Our students that took it upon themselves to, to try to find their safety when their government is not rising up for them were being turned back by, from what I, I, I just saw in, in some video going viral, were being turned back that they hadn't the visa to enter. That tells you about the extent to which our government really cares about its citizens. Because every Nigerian, and I listened to Aliko Dangote, complaining about how even he, the richest man in Africa, because he's carrying a Nigerian passport, is treated around the world. What's our government doing in, in ensuring that, yes, we get better uh, respect than is currently the case? Now, looking at the government-people relationship, which you have spoken about, um, some days ago, the government did say that there was not going to be an evacuation and that the people, that Nigerians in Sudan, should be indoors while the crisis um, is ongoing. That, to some people in some quarters, was uh, they, they believe that was insensitive. You've also spoken about 
other routes that uh, could be taken aside uh, Egypt that the government is planning to take its people through convoy. Um, what would you say about any further delay? Because just as you said, I'm also reading that, that the government is starting to or would be starting to. What, no, I didn't say what that. Would be? I, was only, I was only quoting you. You said, Understandable, yes. said it is planning. Understandable. I don't, I, I don't think they are serious, personally. If it has gone on now for well over a week and we are still planning, uh, it, it, it leaves much to, 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 be, to be desired. Um, it, it, and to say to people to stay indoors uh, because there will be no evacuation. Is our government aware of what it's talking about? Mm. A country is breaking down. People are being uh, uh, sought in houses uh, and whatever and being uh, harassed and, uh, and treated in different ways. The nationals themselves are running to their villages. We all see that on CNN and Al Jazeera. And our government was saying, stay indoors. In inside which doors? The, 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 the doors that are being shelled mm. uh, uh, by, by, the, by, by the two uh, sides in the crisis in uh, 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 Sudan. Uh, a number of people have killed, have been killed, including uh, uh, some United Nations staff members. Uh, we don't know because our government can hardly account for its citizens anywhere. It is usual. I was outside for almost 24 years. You have to cater for yourself, for everything. It's like you are an orphan. In fact, at times you go to other countries to get them to help you when your government is not lifting a finger. They will, in some cases, rather lift a finger to help foreigners, uh, you know, but but when it comes to to, to their own, they call them they, they they set up offices and claim that offices are doing something a diaspora this that what they, these are jobs for the boys. Uh, yeah, I I I I wouldn't uh, uh, be uh, 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 excited about the fact that of course if they're able to get the people uh, through uh, Egypt, all well and good. Better late than never. But this is not something that, according to you, they should be planning. Right. This is something that should be taking place. People started taking their people out since yesterday that uh, uh, they negotiated passages uh, uh, through uh, the Port Sudan, the United States. Nobody could use the, uh, air, air, uh, the, the, the airport that has been uh, uh, de de uh, 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 damaged, uh, but they are getting their people um, you know, through uh, through through the road, uh, negotiating with the government of Sudan, but we told our own people to stay indoors. Now let's look at the crisis in Sudan itself, and taking a look at governance in Africa, we already know that this crisis started long before now. Even uh, it, it also introduced or yeah, birthed the coup of two years ago. Now, the plan is to try to install uh, a, a new civil government in a nation that has suffered a crisis all along. Now, looking at governance in Africa and looking at what is going on in Sudan now with the two generals being at loggerheads at each other while peace is uh, or be Peace is trying to be brokered, and there's no way to truce. Prof, this is a big problem yeah. in the continent. Well, well, um, uh, it, it might interest you to know that I spent three years in Sudan working for the United Nations uh, uh, before I retired from there and then uh, subsequently joined uh, uh, Chrisland University as professor of international uh, relations and political science. Uh, so it, it's uh, it's not a problem that that started uh, in 2019 when Omar al Bashir was overthrown, and then uh, uh, Hamdok as prime minister um, uh, was subsequently overthrown. It, it's 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 a more complex problems that in 
involves neighbors of Sudan, that involves the major powers in the world as to what they want to see in Sudan. And that's the, uh, the, the problem uh, uh, without uh, 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 making it difficult uh, for, 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 for your uh, viewers. That's a problem that I refer to as the need. If you want to, if you want to understand it and to solve it, then you have to understand the uh, situational quadruple nexus problem uh, that Africa faces. Uh, I, I, I can just uh, uh, quickly say that in order to, to understand the problem, you have to look at how do you get peace and security how do you get development going? How do, do you get respect for human rights? How do you get humanitarianism hmm. to, 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 to be uh, operational in any of the African countries? But all these goals of trying to get things done and going will come to nothing if you don't address the situ situational foundations on which this one's raised. Uh, 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 arrested. And the situational foundation is simple. It's four. Leadership deficit, hmm. external dynamics in terms of uh, uh, the, 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 the countries that deliberately destabilize Africa. And of course, you cannot blame them because they are trying to get more out of uh, the, the Africa uh, and take their own share because you don't have a leadership that is capable of being able to protect our interests. We were not the only ones that were colonized. The Asians were also colonized, uh, and quite a good number of them are able to wriggle their way in the world overall with appropriate determined leadership that is not corrupt to find a way to ensure that the external dynamics pressures are not uh, de totally destructive, that they are not able to do much, and they continue to play the servile role and saying our friends in Europe, our friends in America, who are your friends? The, the people are interested in taking care of their own interests. And you have to take care of yours. And we don't have a leadership that is able to figure that out. Um, we had a, 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 a set of leadership as we were getting independence who were trying in all this. Then the militaries uh, took over in uh, quite a reasonable portion of Africa, mm. uh, including Sudan. So if you limit it to wanting to look at Omar el-Bashir, Omar el-Bashir created the rapid support forces. Mm. The rapid support forces was facing uh, the 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 the, uh, the uh, uh, Sudan is made up of uh, Africans Arabs and a melange of that the mixture of that uh, and somehow 2003 started the four crisis that became a full blown war in which hundreds of thousands of people were killed. That's right. And the the, the in setting about that the the the, the Rapid, uh, the, the precursor of the rapid support, support uh, forces was called the Janjaweed. The Janjaweed was put in place to damage and drive the Africans out of their villages and whatever. They are still in IDP camps all over the fall. Uh, uh, and the reaction to the condemnation of the world about Janjaweed and ragtag militia was the Umar al-Bashir regime creating General Hemeti uh, as the head of the rapid support forces. Uh, and eventually, eventually, the uh, rapid support forces grew as an alternative presidential uh, uh, support base that if the uh, Sudanese armed forces were going to be a problem. So when he was overthrown, you have the two generals in that formation taking over from one general. And that tells you two commands, hmm. which is normally not, which is not normal for a military setup. That's and right. that problem ha has been there, whether it is in the 2019 or in the 2021, uh, Hamdok was taken from the United Nations to come and be prime minister, but it was decoration prime minister. Hmm. And invariably, 
the, the, the crisis is what we have seen. And it's not far from the crisis in many parts of Africa. We, we, we are facing our own problems uh, uh, with Boko Haram. That's right. Um, even though uh, this government has reduced territorial claims of Boko Haram, but Boko Haram is still very strong. Other, other uh, uh, bandits uh, uh, and uh, uh, criminals uh, as terrorists are taking Prof. over different parts of the country. That's right, Prof. Thank you so much for your contributions tonight. Um, that's Professor Baba Femi Badijo, a professor of political science and international relations. Thank you for being part of the news tonight. You're very welcome. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.